Hello, Facebook, YouTube. Today, uh, <clears throat> uh, Uriel, the archangel, God is our fire. God is our light. No, not wooden. He's a false god. Quit acknowledging false gods on God's days. All right. Still uh, Hanukkah. Uh, they're lighting up another part of the menorah. Very important to understand that. But, uh, the, well, the topic of this message I want to talk about concerning Christ to the masses. That is all about pretty much emphasizing that Jesus Christ, of course, wasn't born on December 25th. Now, nah. um, but I will show you evidence of that he was born that I researched on three days after March 20th because March 20th, uh, three days of March 20th concerning uh, Exodus 12, you know, pattern pretty much. It's supposed to, God does everything in pattern. God doesn't, um, uh, well, actually, Jesus was born twice that people don't know about. He was born on uh, somewhere near September 11th, and that birth was when God said, let there be light, and there was light, that Jesus was that light. He was born spiritually on that time period, and he was born in the natural to come into earth at uh, March uh, 20th, somewhere in there three days before that. Well, March 20th is near the time of uh, spring equinox, you know. Uh, but I have research and I got videos to tell you that. All right, but topic of this message I want to talk about is, um, uh, is talking about the wise men, you know, the wise men going to uh, find Jesus. Now, the truth that I researched is that the wise men, when they came to Jesus, well, Jesus wasn't a baby. He wasn't an infant. He was, they say, one years old or something like that. Something like that. Because the wise men went on a journey, a long journey. Uh, but who was there when Jesus Christ was born as a baby was the shepherds. The shepherds were the people that were there when um, uh, Jesus was born. Uh, the shepherds were. But, G but of course, we know about uh, God telling Joseph to go to Egypt. Um, he went to Egypt for a while because King Herod was, uh, you know, and gave a... Well, he was uh, telling people to kill uh, one year old or, you know, young kids, young, young males. Um, and then the, he came back to uh, Bethlehem. And I believe when he came back to Bethlehem, then the wise men uh, came and gave him gold and frankincense and myrrh. Um, but I want to talk about uh, the idea of, you know, well, you know how this world system is so incorrect, you know, and to me, exploiting the birth of Christ and pretty much trying to celebrate it. But, uh, talking about this message, uh, you know, uh, I want to talk about the wise men, you know, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'm, well, I guess I got to teach it because I don't know how the topic is. Because it's kind of like saying, are you wise enough to seek out uh, the Jesus Christ? Are you wise enough? Something like that. I don't know. But here's the thing. Now, the idea of these uh, wise men, they were astrologists, astrologers in, in uh, Mesopotamia. Uh, they were astrologers. They looked to the stars um, for answers of what's going on. And they have been doing it for a long time because in ancient his ancient past, 
uh, before the flood, they look to the stars for answers concerning what's going to happen in the future. You know what I'm saying? It was the stars that, that at the that time period that they used to do, and they B Babylon still follow. I mean, they followed the pattern of that at that particular time. Now, uh, Daniel. Daniel was, of course, in Babylon, and Daniel, um, of course, wrote his book in Babylon, uh, and he talked about that a Messiah is coming, you know, and I forgot, and Daniel talks about a Messiah, it will come, <coughs> and, and uh, now Daniel had a great reputation uh in Babylon concerning, you know, you know, they thrown in the lion's den and have his influence was greatly uh, influenced by people at that time that he told about a Messiah was going to be exist. And now Daniel existed way back, you know, and throughout generations and generations in Mesopotamia to where is that, whether Babylon the uh they pass throughout telling everybody generation that a messiah happened look to the stars there's a messiah that happened look to the stars and throughout now the time you know this uh age that this time period the messiah the kings were looking in the star and they saw really pretty much jupiter and saturn and some planets conjunct together that created a star and it created a star and 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 that's what they saw that they know they have to go on they went on a journey to find the messiah now here's the thing i love about this ideal aspect of this that these that the ideal simple idea to me is they look these uh wise men were wise enough to look to heaven to find an answer. See, let me say that again. They look up to heaven to find an answer. And the thing is, the problem, uh, well, well, get, well, here's the thing, like in that time period, I mean, all the time periods throughout human history had horrible, you know, things going on in it. You know, like wars and all kind of bad stuff. Uh, plagues and death and all kind of stuff happen in periods of time. And, you know, when you're caught up in the world at, at, at any time period, you know, you, you, because things are so bad and things are so terrible at particular times, you will think that there will not be no answer to the problems that are going on around you because you're so caught up in the bad stuff and you, you're you so surrounded by so much negative stuff of war and of plagues and all kind of other bad things that happen at that period of time. You know, you will think, well, it's so bad that there's no answer to what's going on in this world and things are just going to get worse and worse and worse. But these wise men were looking not in the earth. They weren't looking at the affairs that are going on around in the earth and to what, how many bad things that were happening. It was happening, but they wasn't looking at the earth. They were busy looking up to heaven. See what I'm saying? And they, and, and only looking up to heaven, they know that there's an answer. You know what I'm saying? And they and they know that there's an answer that they're... Now, watch this. The wise man could say, oh, a star in the sky. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And and, and, and it's shining. You know, and wow. It's just, it's just a star. They can just say it's just a star and we're just going to, you know, chill out in our, I don't know, castle or whatever our place said, and just tell everybody there's a star in the sky. Tell everybody around the whatever city that they're at, there's just a star in the sky. Isn't that cool? They could have just did that, but they didn't do that. They said, said, wait a minute, there's a star 
And we know about what Daniel said that as a Messiah is going to uh, come soon. We're going to go follow this star to see if we can find that Messiah, you know, and that's what these king wise men did. They they got their camels and they went off into a far journey. Now, it's important to understand the ideal that these wise men went on a far journey, not a close skippity hop, but a boom, boom. We must I know a far journey because here's the thing. That's us. We uh, we are supposed to understand that we are on a journey. Christians are supposed to understand we're on a journey uh, to seeking, you know, Jesus Christ or seeking God. It's a, it's, it will be a long journey. You know what I'm saying? It's, and you have to go through situations. Go, You have to go through the craziness of this earth. Uh, the what's going on in the earth, the negativity is going on in the earth, and you know all the nonsense that unfortunately at that time period, I believe the wise men saw you know a lot of things and a lot of people doing this and a lot of people doing that. You know what I'm saying that they couldn't been distracted by what's going on here and what's happening over there, or there's a war happening over there, or there's a festival happening over there. They could have just, let's join in this festival over here and get us off the path of going after to go find the Messiah. Go find the the person that's going to be the answer to the problems that's going on. Now, here's what I, oh yeah, I forgot to talk about that. And here's what I love about this journey. Not only these wise men went on a journey, but they brought gifts. Yes, they brought gifts. They brought gifts to see. They they were so confident in what Daniel told them concerning the Messiah is going to happen and look to the star. You know what I'm saying? That they brought gifts. You know what I'm saying? They 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 brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They don't know who, and they like you know. I guarantee they was like you know where where should we go? What should we go? But the idea of what they did is they followed the star. You know what I'm saying? And and the thing is, and they let they let an object from heaven uh guide them. They let more likely let heaven guide them. Wise men will let heaven guide them. They won't let the earth guide them. They will let heaven guide them. And and the thing is, what's going on with most Christians or most people these days, they're allowing the earth influence to concerning the problems and the bad things that are happening around us become their guidance. Now, if you're allowing this world system to tell you this and the world says, and to me, this religious system tell you that, you're going to have a you're going to have a difficult time finding the answer, the true answer concerning to what's uh, that can give us solutions to everyone pretty much is the ideal aspect of Jesus Christ he's supposed to be the answer and the thing is that's you know but they were wise enough to continue to seek to let heaven show uh us where the messiah is. Now, you know, but the only thing I have have a problem for me, you know, concerning outside looking into the story of the wise men, that they went to King Herod, you know, uh, and they, uh, why would you go to that person? Um, they went to King Herod and asked King Herod about, you know, uh, that uh, and told King Herod about the sign in the star of heaven and they, you know, talked to an earthly king uh, that was on the agenda to destroy anybody that is trying to take its place of a king, you know. Uh, well, anyway, they told him that about the uh, prophecy that they know about that a king shall come to uh, Israel and da 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 and Herod says, of course, if you find this king, 
let me notify me about this king and let me go worship him, you know. Um, and the and of course he's not going to go worship him. He's going to go kill him. And and in that you know situation and and even the ideal aspect of that situation, I know that the wise men did not come uh, to a baby Jesus Christ. They came to a child, you know, and the Bible says it says the child. Uh, but anyway, um, that, that they were wise enough to be disciplined. That's what I want to get. They was wise enough to be disciplined on their journey. And, and watch this. In this journey that I, you know, believe that they met Mary and Joseph and Jesus uh, near that manger. You know what I'm saying? Because they could be, you know, thinking that, you know, they could be looking for this expensive, nice house, this, you know, great, you know, place is where a king will be born at. They could be looking in the natural aspects of the situation to find a king, but they were disciplined of following the star to guide them to find a king in an unpleasant place, you know, to find him in him in a manger. I mean, well, not a manger, but in a place near a barn, you know what I'm saying? And, or whatever the place is at. And they didn't, they, and, and they, when they saw where he was at, they looked, they, they saw, they knew it was him. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, they were supposed to bring gifts to. They, they identified him and he was probably a regular little baby child, I mean, young, young child, sorry, little child at the time he was a child. And they recognized that he, who he was concerning when they came to him, you know, they were wise enough. But what I want to get out of this, you know, really, uh, are we wise enough to recognize, uh, oh, first of all, wise enough to search for an answer. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Are we wise enough to search and be disciplined and not distracted by this world system to truly find the answer to all mankind? Well, Jesus Christ is the word. He's the word of God. And if we're not uh, wise enough to search the scriptures and identify the scriptures to what the scripture says concerning the answers to our problems, we're gonna, it's going to happen because we allow the world system of the foolishness and the nonsense of this world system to deteriorate or mess up our search of finding the answer to everyday problems. And we are willing to settle for the problems that are happening around us to uh, drive us nuts and drive us crazy than to be about seeking and searching at the answer to the one that can only solve the problems is what unfortunately too many people are on that uh, journey of going really nowhere, you know, into finding answers. But I hope and pray that you become wise enough to understand that you will see heaven, look to heaven, and let heaven guide you in this word of God to find the answer to your problems that is going on in your life. All right, that's the message. God be glory to him forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen.